Today, we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Mass is offered for Rick Avino. Please be sure your cell phone is turned off or in silent mode. Now let us ask the Lord to open our hearts and minds for the celebration of Holy Mass as we offer a few moments of silent prayer. Please stand. Please join us in our opening hymn, hymn number 468 in your IVE hymnal, hymn number 468. offer this mass for Rick Albizzo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day, the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus, I will test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites, Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. 
The Lord gave them bread from heaven. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. What we have heard and know, and what our fathers have declared to us, we will declare to the generations to come the glorious deeds of the Lord and his strength and the wonders that he wrought. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. He commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna upon them for food and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels, food he sent to them in abundance, and he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains his right hand had won. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus. That you should put away the old self of your former ways of life, corrupted through the deceitful desires, and be renewed in the new spirits of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, 
Whoever believes in me will never thirst. The gospel of the Lord. Today we hear Jesus' bread of life discourse, which takes place the day after the events we heard last Sunday with the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. In today's gospel, the people who have just been fed search for Jesus, but they really don't want him. They just want more free food. Jesus uses this as an opportunity to speak about the food that really matters, the bread of life, that God provides. He begins by reminding them about a gift of food that they were very familiar with, the manna in the desert during the time of Moses. This was seen by their ancestors as a great gift from God. Jesus reminds them that when their ancestors ate the manna, they still were not satisfied. Today, he is providing them food that will never leave them hungry. They ask him three questions indicating their spiritual blindness. Rabbi, when did you come here? But Jesus ignores their question. Would they really believe that he'd actually walked on water the night before? Their second question, what must we do? Jesus tells them they are to work for food which does not perish. And the third, what sign are you going to give us? It is apparent they did not recognize the miracle of the loaves and the fishes. Jesus then makes a powerful statement. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. So we come before the Lord this and every mass, and we too say to the Lord, feed us. But how do we really want to be fed? The food that God gives requires a total commitment to him. It is called the bread of life for a reason. The word life in the bread of life is certainly not the life we normally think of because it is so much more the life of Christ. The same spiritual life that we receive at our baptism and the same one which remains with us after our physical death. The bread Jesus offers us at each and every mass nourishes this way of life. It helps us to grow stronger spiritually and more powerfully in the battle for the kingdom of God. We, when we place his body into our hands, we are committing ourselves to his way of life. The last year of my diaconate formation I was assigned to hospital ministry at Presbyterian. As some of you may be familiar with, you never know what the Lord has in store for you when you knock on a patient's door. As is often the case, those that we visit sometimes minister more to us than we do to them. This was certainly the case one Saturday morning when I was asked to bring the Eucharist to a patient. After we said our prayers, I placed the body of Christ in her hand. She did not move, but looked intently in her hand for at least a minute. Truthfully, I wasn't sure what she was doing. Then she began to cry. It was a moment of reverence that I will never forget, and I was overwhelmed with a feeling of peace. To this day, I still reflect on that encounter and I ask myself all the time, what do I see when Father places the body of Christ in my hands? How do I feel? What do I really mean when I say, Amen? When the body of Christ is placed in your hands or on your tongue, what do you see? What do you feel? What does your Amen mean? As I've said many times before, if we leave Mass the same as when we entered it, we are missing the point of Mass because Jesus needs all of us. 
as St. Teresa of Avila so beautifully said, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God and God, true God and true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father, who in all things were made. For us, men of our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us elevate our supplication to our Almighty Father. For Pope Francis, Bishop Edward, Bishop Gregory, all clergy and religious, as they strive to nourish the faithful who hunger for true food that endures, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of nation, that by God's grace they may stand firm for the sanctity of human life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord for strength for all who hunger and thirst for justice and freedom and for hope for all who are persecuted, oppressed, and wrongly imprisoned. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayers. for all Christians that we may see even the smallest children, the unborn, as reflections of God's glory called to be temples of his Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us gathered here, for the grace to stand firm in our faith in the Holy Eucharist, his body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. For those who have died, including the victims of the floods in Germany, that the Lord will show them mercy so that they may rise with him to eternal life and everlasting joy. We pray to the Lord. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> it's truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exhortation we acclaim. For this gift we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <coughs> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit <clears throat> to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, of God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, of glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And gracious, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Those who are not able to receive Holy Communion, you are encouraged to pray in your pews, yearning for a prompt union with the Lord and with the community. For those who are able to receive, please remember to consume the body of Christ in front of the minister. Our communion hymn is hymn number 307, hymn number 307 in your IVE hymnal.
consecrate ourselves to our Lady. Hail Mary. Let us pray. <coughs> Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Do you or a friend or a family member want to know more about the Catholic faith? Do you need to receive your sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and the Holy Eucharist? The RCIA offers a path to assist you on your faith journey and toward full communion with the Catholic Church. Come and see if RCIA is right for you. Contact the Faith Formation Office to register or for information. Registration for Faith Formation and for RCIA are being held in the Parish Center today, Sunday, from 9.30 to 1 p.m. or tomorrow. Next Sunday, August 8th at 4 p.m., come and celebrate Father Gaston's 41st birthday. Bring food for your family and join the fun in the back parking lot of the church. August 20th is the feast of our beloved patron, St. Bernard of Clairvaux. We will celebrate a novena of masses beginning August 11th with a different intention for each day. Weekday masses will be bilingual at 6 p.m. Please check the bulletin for more information. Thank you to all parishioners and friends who purchased items and who provided donations for our parish garage sale. And a special thanks to this year's coordinators, Renya. Garcia and Josie Mendoza and their team of volunteers who put in a huge amount of time and hard work toward a successful garage sale. Pro proceeds are still being tallied and we will announce the final total next weekend. Good afternoon, everyone. I won't keep you here too long, but it's good to see everyone. And I'd like to extend an invitation to an event that is taking place this afternoon at 4.30 p.m. We will have our family group meeting um, where the sisters and father will be presenting on the topic of relativism, or the stolen truth about truth. So where we can have a discussion about what is truth? Can we come to know the truth? And if so, how do we go about getting to know the truth and spreading the truth onto others? I myself will be presenting to the teenagers, and Sister Ephesus will be presenting in English to the adults. So if you're interested in coming, 
4.30 p.m., I believe, in the cafeteria of the school, which if you know the back parking lot, the entrance is over there, or we'll open these doors down the wheelchair ramp to the school and you can go directly in. Bring your own snacks and refreshments if you'd like. I think we might have some water available for everyone, but please join us for our family group um, today, which after we have our discussion and talk, we will also say the rosary together as a community here in the church. God bless you and have a great afternoon. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in God, in our protection and in the wings of the Spirit. May God of you be glorified and you thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us in singing our recessional hymn, hymn number 495 in your IV hymnal, hymn number 495. If I survey 